Welcome! During this video, we are going to learn about opportunities to respond, or OTRs. When you think of OTRs, you might think of a student in the classroom raising their hand when a teacher asks a question and waiting to be called on. However, OTRs are much more than that. OTRs are a proactive academic strategy that can be implemented by educators to support educational and behavioral outcomes for all students. Remember, our best classroom management strategy is high quality, engaging instruction. OTRs are a critical part of that instruction. So let's start from the beginning. What is an OTR? An OTR is when a teacher presents an instructional question, statement, gesture, or directive that promotes a detectable student response. The response can be saying, writing, or doing. Let's take an OTR and put it into the ABC paradigm that we covered during your class-wide PBIS professional learning. Recall the antecedent takes place before the behavior and the consequence is what happens after the behavior. In the case of the OTR, the antecedent is the teacher providing a question, cue, or prompt. The behavior is the student responding to the OTR and the consequence, or what follows the behavior, is the teacher giving feedback. Here you see an OTR for math play out in the ABC paradigm. Frequently eliciting responses from students will contribute to a positive learning environment. It can increase student engagement and on-task behavior. It provides increased accountability for both the student and the teacher. It promotes the expected behavior and reduces disruptions or other inappropriate behavior. It helps to maintain a perky pace to keep class moving along. OTRs are a form of embedded formative assessment teachers can use to monitor students' understanding and to adjust the lesson based on responses. OTRs provide both affirmative feedback in the form of specific praise and informative feedback in the form of corrections to responses. The two types of OTRs most commonly referenced in the literature are individual responses and unison responses. An individual response might be when a teacher calls on an individual student to respond. In contrast, a unison response might be something like choral responding by the class to the teacher's prompt or question. A typical unison response OTR is the use of response cards. For example, giving each student a card with A, B, C, and D written around the perimeter of the page. Students can respond to a multiple choice question holding up the letter of their response for the teacher to see. Another example of a response card is seen here with the responses yes or no and true or false pre-written on the card. The advantage of response cards over a blank dry erase board is that the time and effort to rewrite the response down is eliminated and the correct answer is already available to students to select. Here's a list of additional OTR examples. It is not an exhaustive list, and you probably could add more to this list based on your own teaching. Take a moment to read through the list and think of your additional examples. So, if OTRs are important, what guidelines are there for the use of OTRs? Great question! First, teacher talk should be no more than 40 to 50% of instructional time. There has to be time and space for students to be actively engaged and responding. Next, we have to have a variety of both unison and individual responses. There has been research demonstrating that having 70% of OTRs be unison response and 30% of responses being individual being the good recommendation. Additional guidelines have further differentiated the rate based on the type of responding being elicited by the OTR. For example, a rate of three to five OTRs per minute for simple responses, whereas a rate of one OTR per minute is appropriate for more complex responses, such as partner sharing or writing an answer. In the case of a very complex or involved response, such as a science experiment, the rate of one OTR per 10 to 30 minutes is more realistic. Given all of these guidelines, Hayden et al. 2010 identified a recommended minimum rate of three OTRs per minute 
for teachers to provide students during instruction. This is a rate at which research has demonstrated that students are significantly more likely to be actively engaged. So that makes one think, what is the, the average rate of OTRs happening in the classroom? In 2017, Scott, Hearn, and Cooper published a summary of 6,752 observations completed in pre-K, elementary, middle, high, middle-high combined, K-8, K-12, and alternative settings. The observations took place across content areas of reading, language arts, mathematics, science, and social studies in schools with a variety of demographic characteristics. One of the many things summarized from these observations were the number of teacher-provided opportunities to respond per minute across various grade levels. The results of summary is presented in this graph. We see the highest average OTR per minute was at the elementary level, and that was still well below the recommendation of three OTRs per minute. The averages for middle and high school were even lower. This leads one to wonder, if OTRs have such positive impact for students, what can be done to increase the rate of OTRs in classrooms? The good news is that providing OTRs is completely within the hands, within the hands of you, the classroom teacher. There are a couple of recommended strategies that are designed to help teachers increase the OTRs in their classrooms. The first strategy is to identify OTRs that are currently embedded in your curriculum. Many available instructional curriculum in the areas of reading, writing, and math incorporate built-in OTRs, usually in a choral responding format. Taking the time to identify where OTRs are already embedded into your curriculum materials allows you to prioritize components of your curriculum that actively engage all students. If the OTRs do not seem sufficient, this also affords you the opportunity to enhance or adjust your teaching to integrate more opportunities for active student responding through the use of more OTRs. Dr. Anita Archer suggests a strategy referred to as quick writes, where a teacher reviews upcoming lessons in the teacher's manual and writes in additional OTRs, either using post-it notes or just writing in the margins. This pre-planning allows the teacher to not have to come up with ideas for OTRs on the spot and allows the teacher to choose, in the moment, which OTRs will be used based on the response of the students. Teachers often end up with more OTRs than needed. The second strategy involves having teachers plan, implement, and monitor their increased use of OTRs. The first step in this strategy is to determine your present rate of OTRs. This is typically done by recording your OTRs during consistent and short periods of teacher-directed instruction, say 10 to 15 minutes per day. You can keep track of the number of OTRs by making a tally mark on the paper, using a golf counter, or using a frequency counting app on your phone. Another option is to record your instruction and count the OTRs while listening to or reviewing the recording after school. The rate of OTRs is cal calculated by adding all of the OTRs together and dividing by the number of minutes of instruction. This will give you your OTR rate per minute. The idea is that you will have three to five data points that you can graph prior to starting your plan. This is your baseline data. Once you have your baseline data, you need to develop a plan that includes a specific measurable and observable goal of increasing your OTR rate per minute. You will also create a self-management plan to increase your OT OTR. Basically, what steps are you taking to accomplish your goal? Write these steps down. Then you follow your plan, continuing to collect data to monitor the impact, and then adjust your plan as needed, depending on how you are doing in relation to your goal. These same steps could be accomplished with consultation from an instructional coach or colleague with whom you work. Having someone to provide you with additional input and suggestions may strengthen your planning and outcomes. Now that we've unpacked what OTRs are, why they are important, and ideas of how to increase OTRs in your classroom, you have three additional tasks. One, individually or as a group, reflect on the guiding questions that go along with this opportunities to respond video. Two, individually use the action plan to increase opportunities to respond to create your personal plan to address OTRs. And three, find out from your administrator if you need to submit this plan anywhere. 
Thank you for your time and good luck.